Hey, this is the part where I usually say, I've never played Bomb Squad Academy before, and that's mostly true. I have played s six minutes of it before experiencing a Comcast outage. I went ahead and just, I'm going to restart the playthrough here. Um, don't know anything about this game other than those first five or six minutes. It looks like it's you're visualizing circuits and trying to disarm bombs without blowing them up. I think I made it to like step four or five or something before the outage started. So we're just going to start back from the beginning. I'm going to pretend like I didn't see those parts. Welcome to the Academy. Let's jump right in and review the basics of electronics. Electrical current flows from circuit to circuit like water. Batteries are current sources. Switches control the flow of current. Switches preventing the current from reaching the buzzer. Try flipping the switch and then turn it off. You can now painfully hear the buzzer. LEDs are small lights that turn on when current flows through them. It can help you quickly see the state of a connection. See if you can turn all the LEDs on. I was confused last time and that red indicates something is on. I would usually expect it to be the opposite, but I think it's meant to say that there's power flowing through the switch. You are getting the hang of this. Disarm it before the timer runs out. You've got plenty of time for us to go over how it works. There are four pins, a power pin, a detonate pin, and two disarm pins. The detonation pin will trigger the bomb immediately. To disarm it, activate pin A and B. You can also cut the power altogether, but that's not possible because the battery is connected directly to it. Okay. So I blew it up here before the Comcast outage when I didn't realize that red meant on in that case. Huzzah! Always check the detonate pin. This is the one that I was in the middle of when the stream died. Um, I was confused because I thought I had sent power to the detonate pin and it still didn't explode. So you turn this one on, this one on. I guess that successfully finishes it by just turning the power off by doing the fourth one. That was why I was confused, because it had nothing to do with the, the disarm nodes. Gotcha. Hey, Yahan, how you doing? All right, we're now officially in actually for real blind territory as of the next bomb. Good luck. Hurry. Guess I should always check power first, huh? Looks like I have no way of stopping it. needs to be off. Huzzah! Flipped all the right switches. That was great. Now try this one. Oh, that's fun. Okay. So, power node does not go through any switches as far as I can tell. Um, I get to see here. There we go, perfect. Oh, I'm sorry, I hope your hip pains improve, Johan. It's a bummer. I've been getting those sometimes now too. Depending on how I sleep. Sometimes you'll see boards with wires. Wires work just like traces. They allow the current to flow from one component to another. Oh, that's kind of a cool way to expand on this. I mentioned before the stream outage that I played quite a bit of Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, but that's more of a project management game than it is like a visualization, circuitry visualization game. Small wires like these can be cut. Turn all four LEDs off by simply just snipping them. Got it. I do like the progression of this tutorial. It's pretty good at teaching you the basics. Because you can cut a wire doesn't mean you should, because you can't uncut a wire. Okay. See if you can defuse this bomb. Oh, well, that wasn't how to do it. You failed to try again. I'm trying to think why did that detonate it though? Oh, I see. It got to this point and then traveled back and up to the detonate button. That's clever. 
I like that they, they, they could have split that into two separate tutorial steps, but it wasn't really necessary because we already had the one that was really simple of just cut the wires to get the LED. I like that they played around with the concept there. How about this mess of wires? R, A, and B. Don't click the first one. Got it. Why did that happen? Because this came down here and touched that wire. And if I hit the rest of them, I think it's just fine, right? Got it. Okay. So it really should be starting from the end almost every single time. Another circuit with a lot of wires. Be careful. 10, 8. Via this green wire here. I think if I just turn everything else on, it's fine. You finished the first section of the game. Awesome. Basis of electronics. Next is logic gates. Cool. Hey, Kai Mom. How you doing? Let's look at our first logic gates. Red component is an AND gate. I like that they use the buzzer here for teaching purposes. The AND gate only lets current flow through with both inputs have current flow. Yeah, that makes sense. Ready to do some work. I like that they let you turn off the buzzer and still pass the stage. It doesn't have to be just buzzing the whole time. Diffuse the bomb. Next board is a lot of switches. Maybe you should flip them all. Maybe not. All right, that one's a bad one. The rest of them are fine. Good. Yeah, keep talking is great. Hey, oh wow. Thanks, Johan. Appreciate that. Last board is pretty straightforward. Music's pretty great. You're super awesome. Okay, I see. If I'd hit this one, it would have gone down and destroyed me. Keep talking is a great family like couch game too. It's the kind of game you can play with people who aren't gamers. I guess you need to flip some switches and cut wires here, but who knows? Right, power's guaranteed. It looks like they like to make the power guaranteed here. I would just cut that wire, but I think that makes the bomb unsolvable. I need to look at that and figure out why I didn't break it when I cut that wire. Oh, because right, it doesn't stop the current from flowing. Okay, it just stops it from getting to that shortcut. Gotcha. Yeah, right? The least stressful job ever. If you fuck it up, it's not your problem anymore. I'm so stressed out, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's... uh. If I was still working in project management and testing, it's definitely like a team building game I would recommend. Good for teaching people to communicate clearly. This board will really challenge you, I guarantee, but don't panic, you could do it. Which one? Hammer. Flowing directly from the battery, so we're not stopping that from happening. This is pretty safe, I think. Are you sure? This may already be a failure then, right? Alright, 
see if it lets me restart this one. Oh, I see. I needed that to get to C. Gotcha. So how do I stop this one, then? I think with this guy, actually. Nope, that one's still wrong. Why? Oh, because I need this one to flow into B. Shit. So that means it has to be this wire, but then the question is why? So when this one goes around, it comes up here, this AND gate comes down this way, passes to this AND gate, passes to this AND gate. I think this is almost exactly what they expect you to do, starting with this one, because it seems like it's the most obvious, then this one, and then this one. Got it. Told you you could do it. Thanks, game. Rotary switches. Select the path it takes. I see. Try to turn on the display. So it's in the direction that the arrow is pointing. Got it. Well, sure, that's the solution, Robin. But I mean, from like a teaching perspective, they designed the board to make you intuit the one that looked like it had the most obvious consequence. Try to get the signal across from the in port to the out port. Okay. That'll do it. Rotary switches are fun. Can you figure out this maze? Rotary switches are kind of terrifying, actually. Ah, and I'm gonna get the one. Whoops. <laughs> They're pretty good at this. At baiting out a, a mistake like that. Oh, well, let's not start with that one. Okay, pre-select that guy. There we go. Order of operations is everything. No kidding. Turn off the power. That'll do. You chose wisely. I'm guessing whenever there's a turn off the power solution on the board, that that's the only solution. Problem looks hard, but you should be able to figure it out. Okay, turning off the power is not an option. Let's see. Gets me one. I can get through multiple paths here. Let's see. That gets me B. I think if I don't cut this wire, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> Let me figure out what went wrong. Okay, that triggered an AND switch here. Oh, that rotor was in the wrong position. Okay. I think I still want to cut that one though. Yeah. Pretty sure that's still right. A. And there's B. Take things one step at a time. You can solve complicated circuits. Got it. Good luck on the final circuit. It's particularly tricky. So these two both detonate the bomb. Probably don't want well, I have to decide whether I want this one or not. Because I might need it for this switch here. I'm gonna make sure this doesn't complete under any circumstances, so I'm basically not to switch this guy. This guy can maybe switch depending. Okay, I think that's right. And I have to make sure this never happens. Uh, 
I need to find out why that happened. Oh, right, I transferred this guy before snipping it. See, I, I'm assuming not, I was gonna snip that first, but I think I actually need it to do this one. What I'm not clear on is I thought that this rotor switch would send it through this gate and not back. Oh, I see the problem. The wire's coming here, it's before it gets to the switch. So it sends it down both circuit paths, got it. I think this is still basically the right idea over this way. Um, it just basically just turns that on versus off. I still don't want to snip this guy, I don't think. That's right. I have to have power going to this one, so I think I have to snip this one actually. Is it possible for me to get to B now? I think the answer is still a yes. But can I get C? Yes, perfect, got it. Do the first section on digital logic. Ooh, combinatorial. Challenging circuits. Another logic gate, so it's a OR gate. Either one will activate it. It's interesting they teach you or before and, or they teach you and before or, I should say. Now the fun can begin. I guess and is you're less likely to fuck it up than it were. Congrats, you saved all the children. There's a new component in this one. Whoosh. Hmm. So, button as a component it basically delays sending power through that node until you click on it. Got it. I guess that's interesting. It's different from just a switch because it's sort of like a the opposite of a wire that you cut from a game design perspective. I'm guessing it's a thing that can only send power but not take it away. Oh, I have to press and hold it? No, so it's a little different than that. That's interesting. There we go. Clever. Push buttons only let current through when pressed. Okay, it's still, it's still interesting as a non-degenerate switch mechanic. It basically forces it to be the last thing that you do. I needed to learn what the button did. Another bomb for you to defuse. I've got an OR gate that causes... Okay, so any of these flowing through equals death. I think this is it, right? Yeah, okay. You defuse the bomb, again. Let's see. This is a cool game though, I dig it. Now, why did that blow me up? Oh, because this hand gate was already, okay. So if we turn that off, it should be fine. There it is. Think through the steps first. Anything that touches this is game over. Triggers a buzzer, which is just scary, but not game over. This one has to be active. This one has to be active. This one has to be off, I think. First try. Fantastic. But don't you think that if someone is actually making a bomb to foil a bomb diffuser that they would require you to press the big red button. Let's see. So turning off the power is 
not an option because it's connected directly to the battery. This is eventually going to be necessary, so I can't cut this wire. Detonation is this or a gate. stop it from detonating in this case, honestly. It gets me C. Oh, right, because it's not flowing through from the other direction. We're okay. Got it. I die anyway, just due to timing here. Kaboom. Okay, don't want to cut this wire. You might want to cut some of these wires. Yeah, because these connect down into the detonate. Gets me C. That gets me A without blowing myself up like last time, because that went through and killed me. And then B is this one. Got it. Can you beat this circuit? Who did this? We need this one for the disarm. Probably don't want this one at all. If I hit this switch, it's game over. If I hit this switch, it's game over. Why did that happen? Oh, okay. Yeah, I really let the the wires being in the way of the circuit path confuse me here. This one needs to go here, right? Game over. Got it. Looks like another bomb. Take care of it. Detonate. So I'm not clear on how these switches work when they're not directly facing the path that they're going to be on, right? I'm going to blow it up, but I just need to test it here. Let me see, it shows you the path. So what is this switch actually doing? It looks like, am I correct that this switch is completely superfluous? It looks like it's taking input from both of them, isn't it? I get the ones where you're changing the output path. Flowing through here. This is passing through the end gate. This one makes sense because I'm changing whether it goes up or down. Oh, it just happens to be that there's inputs both up and bottom, so it's blowing up regardless. Okay. I guess what I should be visualizing is like a green dotted line leading from here through here to show that it's connecting, right? And this, this should be, I could imagine, like a red wall here showing that this signal is being stopped. Okay, I get it. Thank you. That's helpful. So it's always pointing at the path that it's accepting input from, basically. All right, well, we need to turn one of these off somehow. Turn that switch off. This is coming from below. It's going to come from the below no matter what, though. I don't think that matters because this is still an OR switch. Okay, that disables this whole bottom row here. Got it. I think I'm protecting myself now. Got it. Cool. I like that kind of more of a negative space puzzle. Well, a lot of these seem to be like, just guarantee that it's not going to blow up if you hit go, and then just hit turn all the switches on. I'm sure that that changes later in the game. 
I guess that the wire cutting is what stops it from just being disabled the detonate path, right? Because sometimes you disable the detonate path and also disable the solution in the process. So we got an and path here. This guy is completely superfluous and would lead to my death. I can also die here. And that was also superfluous and would lead to my death. So if I turn the rest of the on, yeah. That thing I just said. Disable the detonate path and then turn everything on and you'll be fine. Final bomb in this section. Extreme chance of explosion never uses a final test. Got a battery one here. This wire is superfluous. Basically just leads to death. Because if I hit this wire, it travels and then it just dies when it comes out. It's gonna only come out that side. This whole section down here is kind of pointless. Um, it's my other detonate path. That one. And then this one. Oh, I see. We actually do want that still one. Scared me. Got it. That one I still got away with. Make sure it won't blow up and then turn everything on. Cool. Exor. Can you tame the most interesting logic gate yet? Black gate is an Exor gate. Let current through if either input is receiving current, but not if both inputs are receiving current. Yeah. Flip a switch. Boom, JK. Flip the bottom switch. I think games like this exist to teach basic circuitry to kids. I think a lot of kids are going to get a pretty basic intro to it with Minecraft these days. An exclusive OR gate. Test your understanding. Which one's detonate? So we want this one because that's keeping us from blowing up. We don't want this one. Got it. Oh, that's fun. So XOR gates are a way for cutting a wire to result in the disarm. This board's a mess. No shit. Fire the designer. Okay, so neither of these wires can be cut. And then you have to cut specific wires to get the other gates to go. Neither of these. One of these. Got it. You defuse the bomb, great job. Here's a riddle for you. Power still is a direct pass. Detonate here is an AND gate. Probably need to cut that guy, right? I guess when you cut that, nothing happened. So I think I actually fucked this one up. Start. this goes off. Now we need to get the other hand switch going here. And Charlie, and I don't blow up if Charlie's on. Oh, but now both of these are on over here. This one will always be passing through, won't it? I want one of these to be turned off. This one? Got it. Cool. That was a cool one. This is a neat game. It's one of those sorts of puzzle games where 
your brain gets it before you're able to like explain why you got it. Must defuse this bomb. Detonate. Okay, this one's a little bit more interesting. So we want to have both flowing through this at the same time. So this one's going to travel through. But if I hit one too early, okay, I guess that makes the, the power switch make more sense. If I turn this one on now, if I press this button, we'll blow up. If I turn this switch on, we won't blow up because it doesn't have power to both of them yet. Yeah. And now we're safe. Okay. Got it. Detonate. Um, this seems like you don't want to cut this one because it's going to be what keeps us from dying. We have to already have power flowing through the top one for that to be the case. Turn this on now, we blow up. Okay. Timer on that one is pretty good. The timer can indicate to you, like, how many things are you having to mess with here? Don't waste any time. Detonate's being blocked right now by both of these being in the XOR. Why did that happen? Oh, because there was still one down at the bottom. Okay, right. And the one at the bottom is going to be there basically no matter what. This is how I protect that. Okay. Sure. Got it. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, defuse the bomb. I love how they like set up this formula for the bomb diffusing where it's like there's going to be a little tutorial pop up and then they're like actually we would just be telling you what to do with you know most of these so we'll just have some text like do it you can do it detonate uh and so we want this one to come up through but we don't want this one so how do we stop it or gate needs to be active. Oh, that's right. That's this one. You can prepare the whole thing and then hold the button down. That's cool. So we actually want this one off. Oh fuck! Look, ma, no fingers. So this one we want to be off so that this flows through and. This flows through. We want one of them to not flow through here, though. This will need the one on the very bottom to go through. It's going to blow up, but it's okay. I think this one is uh, less complicated than it looks. Two seconds per gate. I think this one is one of those ones where you basically just need to stop from detonating, and once you've achieved that, so I want both to flow through this guy if we can. That means this one has to be on. If I just press it with no changes, what's happening here? Oh, go away, little. I guess I can remember what's down there. The end gate's the problem. So this is stopping signal here. Oh, but this one's still making it through. This is basically going to make it through no matter what, right? I like can't stop this circuit, if I'm reading it right. No, I suppose I can. As long as I'm allowed, to, as long as this one doesn't go through, it will stop here. OK. So this guy actually has to be off. Right. And I think that then we're safe from exploding if that one's off, right? Yeah, we just have to figure out how to get to A. Just 
to turn this one on. Got it. Whenever you're ready. Detonates. So this one. I think I need all of these to connect. But I want this one here to not connect. So this one has to go through this guy here. Okay, that's safe. And then we need to get this one here. Six seven five three zero nine. Look at you diffusing bombs all the time. Ooh, capacitors. Store current and release it over time. Changing how circuits must be diffused. That's complicated. Here's a capacitor. Charge and discharge. Let's see what this means. As it lets current through, it also starts to store current. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. I'll flip it off. <laughs> Complicated. Got it. So it's kind of like a button press that manages to stay held for a few seconds. It's a tiny rechargeable battery. Whoops. Hooray! And then once it's diffused, it's diffused, whether it runs out or not. Got it. To figure this one out, good luck. Cut. Detonate. If I press this, because of the capacitor, we don't want that one to go. I see, so here I can charge this <laughs> Okay, got it, game. Yes, cut that one, but not that one. This bomb doesn't look too safe. I mean, is it really just a question of letting the capacitors die here? You got it, but this isn't a take a while. Use I'm done to speed up time and see if you made it. Thanks, game. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, that's a cool solution. Capacitors may discharge prematurely. Oh, there's different lengths of capacitors. That's smart. I see. That's cute. Okay. So this one has to be a power one, right? This is XOR, and it's Bad News Bears, right? That's stressful. Okay. It's gonna blow up before it finishes. Interesting. So this one needs to deplete before this one is allowed, unless if these deplete at the same time. So now you have to do like capacitor math, basically. I think that's basically what's happening here. Once that turns off, it's game over. Oh, 
<laughs> Oof. Yeah, I'll turn it down a hair here one second. So let me just try to state out loud what I think the solution to this one is. I think I basically have to shut off to drain these capacitors so that they're both off at roughly the same time so that there is no current at all going through this guy here since I can't hit the switches at the same time. Uh, there might be a slightly different way for me to do that. This is already game over now if I switch this one because it'll blow up instantly because I won't be able to switch this out of the way. Right, boom, in a second. I think what's happening here is I now have enough capacitor to drain the top one. Because yeah, they shut off at exactly the same time. That's complicated. Cool. I wonder if there were alternate solutions to that one or if it was really just like doing the math to make sure that they ended at the same time. Because I totally didn't do that. Pay close attention. Oh, shit. Gotcha. Yeah, the capacitors really change this game, I think. Um, in this case, the capacitors are, among other things, are keeping us from blowing up right now. Right, right. Cutting the wires would have been the trap. Capacitors and XOR gates, so fun. All right, so this one's all about both of these being on. Capacitors enough to turn that one on, okay. And then we turn this one on. Cool. Those are fun. This is gonna fuck with me though. <laughs> I intuitively get everything else, but the capacitors make things a lot more complicated. They add like an additional mini time challenge in the middle of the actual countdown. A minute. Turning off the power is not an option. Either of these is death. Can't cut this switch or we blow up. The switch would cause the same problem. Pressing the button would cause the same problem. We eventually have to press the button. How does that work? Yeah. Right, because now the XOR gate's disabled. But oh no, another bomb. I guess we have either of these OR gates on. Okay, and then the capacitor will give me enough time to cut the wire, I guess, while it's turned off. Having the switch on isn't really a problem as far as I can tell, right? Okay. Then this has to go back off. Now the question is if detonation and disarming happen on the same time step, my question has been answered. You still die. Okay, got it. Detonation takes priority. So... Whoops. Oh, I forgot to cut a wire. That's right. But do I want to cut a wire? Keeps me from blowing up there. The only other thing I can change, I guess I can cut this one. Oh no, that doesn't actually help me at all, does it? Right, I think this is already a loss now. Let me think about it real quick. The 
This one should be flowing, shouldn't it? I don't see why it isn't. Because maybe it's not cuttable? Kaboom! Why didn't I not blow up that time? But I did the last time. I only cut one additional wire. Did I just cut it further down so I can't see it anymore? Oh, it's because it was flowing through the switch here and going through this OR gate. I understand. Let me do this one again. It does matter where you cut it. It changes where it is on the bomb. Okay. Sure. No, I mean it the yes I understand that the the look of the wire changes based on where on the wire you click it so I clicked it very far to the bottom such that I didn't notice that it had been cut I assume that when you cut the wire it would always like exactly bisect it somebody's getting fancy no kidding use left hand only this is a little more than a little complicated. Um, detonation. Main problem is the capacitor. I think I'm safe. Well, no, I need to capture this guy here. But then I have I can't turn it off once I trigger that. Okay. At least not until the capacitor discharges, right? Why does that one blow up? Oh, because of the XOR. It keeps it from flowing through here in the first place. I see. That is a nice touch. Okay, so you have to be careful which ones you, the order in which you do them here. they can cancel each other out if you're not careful. Like any of these two being adjacent is a game over. Yeah, got it. Hope you can do math quickly. Well, let's blow up to this one like five times. God, that's insanely loud. Turn it down a bit more. Um... Fuck this level. <laughs> let me, before I start doing the math, let me figure out what it actually wants me to do here. Turn the switch off, they start discharging. Doesn't particularly matter. Three, six. 10. So I think the answer to this one is for all of the capacitors to discharge at the same time, such that basically I should visualize this as, you know, three, six, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like this A plus B or C equals D plus E or F equals G plus H or I equals J plus K or L. Okay. It's not even that fast. Let's restart. God, that's loud. Okay. So, uh, eight's the largest one, so let's start with that. It could be 14. Can I make 14 with all of the other ones? No. So it probably has to be three. Eight plus three is 11, right? Five 
Plus nine is too much. That doesn't get me 11, though. I have it at minus 20 decibels. I'll try to turn it down a little bit more here to stream. I guess I can do more math operations than just that, right? Because I can also adjust what's being fed into the thing down here. Now it's... 8 plus 3 is 11. And... I see. I can refeed this number in down here. Incorrect additions may result in loss of limbs. Let me just make 100% sure that they all need to shut off at the same time, because that might not actually be true. I think just this one and this one, uh, it's effectively the same thing, because they all move into this, don't they? Okay. Let's restart again. God, that's loud. It might just be a question of getting... Let me just do something really quick and play it out here. That wasn't what I was expecting to happen. Um, I wish I could dismiss this box so I could look at it. It was not make sure they all deplete at the same rate. Oh, I think I can see it even beyond what's not obscured by the box. Um, I was able to use the rotor switches so that even though this is sending power, it's not relevant. Yeah, there's probably there's, the puzzle I thought this was is probably a puzzle later on or a puzzle that's possible in the design space of this game. But the rotor switches just let me ignore the ones that were longer. So I more or less just had to choose short paths, and I happened to do that randomly when I just clicked the switches randomly to see what would happen. I think I got it, right? I need to make sure that the detonate wasn't triggering, but that the disarm was. Short path at the top, long paths at the bottom. Because the the top one's connected to disarm and the bottom one's connected to detonate. Let me look at it again. I see, these are the only ones that matter. So as long as there's power provided, there's always power coming from this battery. I got you. If I do that again here. Okay, got it, thank you. Cute, sliding switches. So just so I can prepare for the session, the how long to beat is getting to the end of this, right? Sliding switches, each of the steps in the tutorial. I guess that's why it's called Academy. Sliding switch. Whatever two pins the slider knob is on. Oh, that's cool.
Probably gonna take me a little longer than two hours, but we'll see. So I hit this guy here, the capacitor. I should be fine as long as it's done in two, right? Got it. That's cute. Oh no, another bomb. All right, detonate. It's through here. It's an XOR. I have to be careful. If I hit turn this on or move this, it's game over. I can't reach five. Because it flips the moment I turn, I move the switch to it, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to blow up, but I just want to make sure I understand here. Yep, okay. And just to be 100% clear, this would also blow me up. Yep. I don't think I'm able to have this switch on and have this switch in that spot on the same time step, unfortunately. Unless if there's some other way for me to get something on this path here. Maybe it's just saying you can't bring the switch past position four. You have to find some other way to get power here, I guess. Okay. Turning this on is a game over basically no matter what, though. This one... Is this part of the problem, though? Oh. <laughs> Is that the solution the whole time? Just noticing we haven't had one that involved the power switch in a while. Cute. Yay, extraneous board shit. Can't do it. It's not a power solution. Detonate. As long as it's not here, we're fine, right? That would be blowy up e town, which we don't want. Oh, I see. Now it matters the order in which I move those switches so I don't explode myself. Cute. It's fun to think. It's like a lot of puzzle game design degenerates to Bomb Squad Academy. Like this is the most degenerate form of a lot of these puzzles. You could skin this with all sorts of different things. It could be it, there's Baba is you puzzles that are basically this, but don't like literally just have switches, right? It's fun. I guess you've effectively skinned it as a bomb defusal game, but you could make this even more simple if it was just like. Uh, you know, black and white, or maybe like seven colors or something to represent the different kinds of gates. You can make it really, 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 really simple. Okay, let's see. Detonate. Hey, Sir, how's it going? Uh, we don't want it to pass through door number five. As long as it doesn't, we're always okay. All right. I basically have to turn on all the capacitors here. Gotcha. Got it. Whenever you're ready, you wonder that QR code goes. Do I have Google Glass? Is that <laughs> what's the Android way to scan a QR code? Never. 
Such an inconvenient way to access a link. All right, so letting this capacitor turn off is how we game over here. This is fun. Hooray, that's good enough. Oh, you're good, Serp. It was not bad. It was certainly, I think that your info is actually the, the quickest path to get to it. If I was a high enough level that I could fucking wreck by the monsters in there. It's a way, because of the download bar being available instantly, uh, you're basically always able to do that without having to have the monster master job unlocked and without having to have access to heal slimes in the wild. Can you defuse the bomb? Golly, I will try. Um, multiple XOR gates here. Flicking this is an instant explosion. Not quite. All right, so the capacitor holds A, so I just need to find a way to get B turned on without triggering the explosion. I think it's with this. Yep, got it. Is that another bomb? Detonate, anything coming through here is death, okay. This one is is a, more than a little mean. Um, switch moving all the way to the bottom is death, I think. This is all about cutting wires, isn't it? Let's trace the disarm path. These both need to be active. I think I blow up if I move it all the way down, but let me just test that. Yeah. Fortunately, we live in a bomb diffusal reality where I can start over when I die. Moving it through three also kills me, not just moving it to four. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Now I need to get this pathway so that's following all the yellows now can i blow myself up on my way there is the question the answer is probably there we go intro to pulse generation basis of all detonators try not to blow up one here is a pulse generator. While powered, it lets current go through for a short instant every second. Called an oscillator or a clock. Ah, that makes sense. 10 hertz, I see. Fuse it when you're ready. I see. So there's like little timing puzzles that you can do. It only has to be on disarm for a split second. Got it. Here's a variant on the previous bomb. If I move this down, we blow up. That's not necessarily always true. Okay, yep. Oh, they're on different pulses. I see. That one's basically always available. Clever. That's a little tricky to visualize. Okay. Detonate. Right now the clock is ensuring that doesn't go boom. Okay. 
<laughs> that was a little scary. It's ready to blow. Be careful. I do think I'm going to turn long timers on. I don't think it actually makes the bombs any more difficult. Because you effectively get them every time you blow up and just continue the level, right? But... I guess if, like, every time the bomb blew up, it restarted the game, then I could understand, right? I think I need the power visualizers, though. Let's see. It's effectively just recharging this capacitor down here. We get that. Got it. Cool. You know what to do. By that I mean don't blow up the bomb. I see. This is nice. They teach you this after the sliding switches. Do you have a chance to move the sliding switch before it's going to kill you, basically? Who doesn't love timing puzzles? I see. Got it. Okay, I don't want to brute force it. This bomb timing is everything. I think it also helps viewers to see what it... Oh, Jesus, that's... Can I... No. Let's not do that. Hey Kodiak, how you doing? Let me hear that. I guess it only removes the timer itself. I'm just going to turn the decibels way down for this, because whenever there's timers on the same step, it amplifies them. Hopefully that's quiet enough coming through the stream. It's not quiet enough in my ear right now. Okay, uh, so detonate is here. What are my actual choices on this screen? I only have one. No, no, I have a couple. I've got wires to cut, and I've got a switch to turn on or off. Turning the switch on doesn't lead to my death. Why would I want to cut a wire? So it affects whether an AND, an OR gate makes it through. Oh, that guarantees that C is always turned on. Got it. More port for the road. Okay, so this is death. Any of those being activated is just straight up death. Do I have a constant source of, oh, the capacitor is effectively constant. That or it makes the timing extra tricky. Okay, it makes the timing extra tricky. It's not constant, but it's close to it. That gets me part of the way to a, uh, but I need to have this capacitor fully charged before I start fucking with it. Got it. That's mean. And I think I have to do the same thing at the bottom, basically. Ooh, that, fuck that. Fuck that bomb. Pulse generation complete. Timers and detonators. Timers count down, detonators blow stuff up. 
Oh, that's interesting. Instead of making this external to the rest of the bomb itself. But this game is a fun level creator. Timer will count down every time it receives current. When the counter reaches zero, it will supply current to its output pin. Right now it counts in every second because of the 10 hertz clock. Supply constant current to the clock pin and the timer will count down extremely fast. I see. Familiar looking device is a detonator. For the detonation controller we've been dealing with. As long as it's powered, sending any current down the detonate pin will send a spark down the detonation. Turn the switch on. If this was a real bomb, we'd be dead. Turn it off so we can continue. Well, that was a lot, but don't sweat it. You have plenty of time to defuse this bomb. Someone could add the game if they wanted to. Uh, let's see. Anything touching this is death, right? So a valid way to disable the bomb is to stop the clock. I guess that must... I wonder how the game determines that the bomb has been solved. Like, is it just that the clock's not able to tick anymore? Is it an alternate solution state? Or is the game constantly simulating what would happen an infinite number of time steps into the future? Right? Reaching out arbitrarily far into the future and then asking whether the bomb's able to explode or not. I assume it's the former, that just turning off a clock on a bomb causes it to be solved as an alternate solution state. Turning this on does not lead to my death yet, but it would. Turning this on also does not lead to my death yet, and it wouldn't. See. Those might all be choices on this screen. I think so. It's three switches. This one's puzzling to me. Let me restart it. Hold on. As far as I can tell, I don't have any way to get to the clock to disable it, right? Like I can do this, which stops this from having any output. And I can do this, which stops that from having any output. I can turn both of these off now. And this just reverts us to our original state. I don't want us to actually detonate this bomb, right? That's not the purpose on this one. I think I could probably detonate it, but I don't see how I get to shutting the timer off. Oh, you think so? Oh, I understand. Okay. Got it. It wasn't clear to me that 
what you're doing is you're still allowing the timer to reach zero and then just making sure that it's configured to not make anything happen. Okay, got it. That makes more sense. Thank you. Took guts to wait the bomb out. Yeah, I guess for you're right. I, I turned long timers on at the worst possible time in the game. I might turn them back on later. We'll see. So this thing having any kind of output is game over. Great at this. Interesting. Okay, so I guess that one worked by depowering the clock, not waiting for the timer to run out. Okay, I think that just counts as an alternate solution state for these particular bombs. Stable power. Why did that blow me up? Oh, because it stopped an XOR gate. Okay, I see. Nothing is flowing to this one yet, but it will be soon. Where is actually everything flowing from? So none of these guys are doing anything. This one's triggering over here. I think that's safe. Here, if this passes through here, it gets blocked now. So that's okay. These are fun. These are like your traditional movie orders in which to cut the wires, right? Uh, Got it. Cutting it close, though. Look at you diffusing all the bombs. Good job. There's a bomb with two timers. It's interesting. This requires an and, so I'm going to block this XOR. For, for example, I see. Oh, that's fun. And it sends a permanent out signal once it's at zero. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I hope this game has a level creator. I feel like you could make... This could be a fun space in which to brainstorm uh, a puzzle game that's a little bit more skinned than this or, or puzzles in your own game, right? Like, if there's a level creator for this and you're a dungeon master, for example a lot of puzzles degenerate to to this so you could like brainstorm it out in um bomb diffuser academy or bomb squad academy and then put whatever kind of dressing you on it like it's a statue puzzle now right or it's a ice block puzzle whoa oh the clock's super fast gotcha Theory craft the loudest possible map. <laughs> Got it. I don't think I would go so far as to say that every puzzle game ever degenerates to Bomb Squad Academy, but a lot of puzzles are basically this, right? Especially like a little. Virtually every Zelda puzzle, I would say, is something like this. Maximum number of capacitors. Get them all to beep on exactly the same time step. Too slow. I mean, I'm meant to do something before that even happens, and then it's even faster. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, I think that's how that one's supposed to work. Let me disable that one more quickly, I guess. Oh, the bottom one goes off, it's game over, isn't it? Okay, we don't want to do that. We want to do the top one first. Increasing the clock speed on the top level, the bottom one goes, however fast it goes. This is a fun variant. I hope they do it eventually. It's a pretty short game. You could totally use this to map out a puzzle idea. All right, so when that gets sent, I guess I can just let this one run out now, right? Yeah, and there's not an and. Got it, because this XOR is blocking the signal. I guess there are certain puzzles where it they like hard code it in as a solution that if the the proper timer is disabled, that the level just ends, and there's other ones where you actually have to advance the time, get it to zero before it'll say that you're safe. Next bomb is tricky. Do your best. Okay. It would be fun to like, if there was a level creator for this, to like look at every puzzle in Zelda Twilight Princess and like produce the most degenerate bomb squad academy version of that puzzle. Interesting. Why would I not just cut all the wires? Let me look at this again. I missed the rotary switches the first time. I want them to get to the XORs, right? That stops any signal from getting through at all. Cancel the pulses out. So the clock basically can't send anything and the clock stops. I warned you. I think a capacitor is a spin attack. You have to set something up to move into position to charge something and then release it. The um the slider switches are your are links X, Y, and even Z position, right? If you have three slider switches, you can require that Link be standing in a specific location on the bomb and have it not solve unless of those are all in exactly the right spot. And even like you could simulate taking damage by having certain slider positions cause the bomb to detonate. All right, let's see. I have three switches to turn on. I turn these off. I didn't deserve that one. I need to understand why that was the case. Turning this off increases the rate that it's moving. Turning this off means this end gate's not flowing, which means nothing is making it to the clock. Okay, I got it. Feedback loops. If 
Yeah, because like a spin attack puzzle in Zelda is usually about triggering four switches on the same same time step, right? Like standing in between four different switches, so setting up the capacitors so that they all discharge signal on the same time step. Arrangement of new components. Let's look at something which is not a component. Flip-flop. This forms a loop. This causes the circuit to be able to remember its state. Oh, interesting. Push the bottom button. We just added memory to the circuit. Cool. So we're saying hitting the switch once. I like that they wrote the loop on there. That's nice of them. It means that this won't detonate, right? Because I basically turned the loop off. Clever. Loop looks more complicated, but it really isn't. The loop is here. Okay, so you have to start to just like recognize what a loop looks like. I think it's this, right? Yeah. And then it's just on. Got it. Now that you're comfortable with loops, that's that's a leap game, but I appreciate you for estimating me. Here's an interesting use of it. Feedback loop. I think it's like this, right? No, because it has to intercept it. How do I actually get it into the loop here? Is it pick up from here? So that switch has to be off. This is, I think I need to turn the long timers back on. It makes me want to brute force it when they're short to beat the clock. You can always hit I'm done, I guess, to advance 10 minutes, geez. I guess this one's also made significantly longer. All right, so I think what this one's trying to teach me is actually complete this loop up here, which I think is like this almost. Yeah. Well, in this case, at least they recognize that the time pressure is kind of redundant because the bomb blowing up doesn't cause your save file to be deleted, right? It definitely it matters in something like keep talking and nobody explodes because it requires you to communicate to the other person in a more precise way. But the puzzles in that game also aren't authored in the way that these are. They're procedurally generated. I sensor to there. I expected this to just save, and I'm trying to think why it's not doing it the way I expect it to. Let me think here. Are there other wires that I need to fuck with to get this to work the way I expect it to? I think maybe so. Is it this one first? So what I'm expecting to happen when this is all set up is for this loop here to just get saved effectively. And then for me to be able to switch this back down and get the AND loop through to get to the disarm button. But that doesn't seem to be working the way I expect it to. Uh, 
I might not have bomb vision to see the feedback loop yet. Because this has to feed through there. Because I can turn that switch back on, but that doesn't really help me. Why is this not? Because it would if this switch was turned on, but then there's no way for it to start in the first place. Well, maybe it's this one. There we go. That's what we needed. Okay. So I had to move the middle one to get memory into place. Cool beans. All right, what blows up the bomb? And a loop. So clicking that at the beginning cannot be undone short of cutting that wire. And that results in my death. Let's restart this one. QC passed. I think I can cut this wire. There we go. Basically what I'm supposed to be careful of on this level is if I press this button, then this memory gets turned on, which will lead to my death. So I then have to cut this wire and then cut this wire. Or you could miss that entirely and just solve the top half of the bomb. What's better than one loop? Is it two? Okay, so while that capacitor's on, moving the switch across the middle gate is game over. I see. Loop, loop. Sure. Look at another bomb. Take care of it. A clock here. How do I die on this level? Any of these are enabled. It's Oh, it's because it's oscillating, right. This one, hold on. Is this one always on? No, I don't think I can turn it on the exact same time step, right? That's not legal. I'm guessing the game wouldn't require that level of dexterity. And I don't think I'm allowed to hold it in between. I'm just trying to test the parameters of the game real quick. Yeah, no. It looks like I'm visually holding it between, but it's actually counting as the next one. Okay, lesson learned. So the question then, is there a way for me to... advance this up without getting in the way? Yes. Like that. <laughs> that one was scary. This thing's ready to blow. Be careful. Tune in. It turns all those off. Detonates down here. Whoops, why did that blow me up? Because then this XOR wasn't blocked and then it went through this AND gate. Okay, got it. So I pretty much just have these two switches and then two wires to cut. That turns that off entirely, right? There we go. Perfect. Someone set up us the bomb. Flip flops. 
master all components, including this one that has a memory. Component here is a flip flop. An integrated version of the circuit we were just playing with. That's fun. Then you black box it. I feel like you could keep adding levels onto this too, and it's not even needed to be a, a bomb diffuser anymore, right? Just keep abstracting things more and more as you zoom further and further out from the circuitry. Control the output by sending current to either input. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Press the push buttons. Clever. Works just like the feedback loop circuit, but it's much easier to understand just by looking at it. Okay. Hooray! Black box abstraction. I like that it's literally a black box, too. Now that we shrink it down, we can build bigger circuits. Let's toggle some flip-flops. Disarm this bomb if you can. Let me get something actually flowing there first. I see. I only need a single pulse of power to turn the switch on. Let's see. That sends it to the XOR, which blocks this output. Turn that switch on. There we go. Got it. Black box abstraction is like, it's basically how human civilization is able to exist. You can kind of see it as a, a microcosm and like the progression of circuitry, but the idea that you don't need to know how everything inside the box works to understand what the box does. Someone that is a computer programmer might need to know how the code works, but doesn't need to know how the operating system works and the person who knows how the operating system works doesn't necessarily need to know how the circuitry works and so on as long as they have the basic abstracted idea all right um detonate a capacitor can kill me there if i'm not careful but it's also what i use to turn off this switch but if the Pastor gets touched at all, it's came over. I think this is a good start. That turns that one on, that gets me to C. That turns that one on, gets me to A. And then I turn it off. Got it. The physical version of an API, yeah. You have people whose whole job is to fix stuff when the abstractions at various levels start to break down. Seriously though, it's it's how we can do just about anything. No one person has to retain the total sum of all human knowledge. You can defer to some other process and be like, and then because math, this is what happens. This thing is ready to blow, be careful. Turn A on. That's kind of fun. So if you switch, if you connect a flip-flop box to a rotary switch like this, it's basically just a, an on-off switch with no other complication to it. Okay. Um, that guy's on now. That guy's on now. But there's a prop. Turning this on will now detonate the bomb. There we go. Cool. Your skill of a really good programmer is being able to think in multiple levels of abstraction at the same time. I could hear that, yeah. You'll do it even within your own code, right? 
for his flip-flops and two detonators. What? <laughs> okay. Flip-flops. We got... What are my... What are my choices on this screen? Some wires and an on-off switch. The on switch will advance the timer, but it will also charge this capacitor. Okay. I can turn that on and off so long as the capacitor is enabled. But this other one being activated results in death, so I have to be careful. So I think I actually, what is the default state of this? Is that this guy on by default? It is. So before I do anything, I want to turn that off. Okay. This guy's on, and that's also a bad thing. I see. So on power cuts on oh did i cut the power too soon i might have hold on i need to cut this wire as well got it so now it's off cut these turn that off and both of the flip-flop boxes are off now and I think I'm basically safe because the ands can't ever be turned on now. If I look, I'm done. It'd be nice if I could like click and drag this to max out the speed to end the stage. Got it. Cool. What is this? Another bomb? Okay, detonator is if the slidey switch moves along the bottom. But I can move it along the bottom by switching the rotor. This one lets me turn this guy off. I shouldn't have to fuck with it anymore, I don't think. Turn this on just to turn it on. Oh, but I do eventually need it to get to the disarm option. So in fact, I want that to be on, not off. Now it's on. Fantastic. So I need to get this one on which involves some kind of shenanigan. Now I can move this back here. Wait, that's not right. Oh no, it has to go down the, the off path. So this has to go down. I see, it's all about the order in which I'm turning them off and on. Now that one's on, okay. There we go, got it. I can try next time. This thing looks dangerous. Got a clock and a capacitor. Charges that capacitor. Then we want to switch it off again, right? Yeah. Oh, so that's so it can disarm. Ah, clever. I also just use this. Drain the timer. I love the little hint they put in there. 
Yeah, this game would be great for a uh, a level creator, I feel like. Question, is Bomb Squad Academy Turing complete? It depends on how many custom art assets you're allowed to add into the game, right? It's like you're like your space to work with would become the problem pretty quickly. Unless if you could make your own flip-flop boxes. Mm -hmm. It has memory. Oh no, another bomb. Enter the code. That's fun. <laughs> right on. It's not two. Don't press two, it turns out. We understand. Two and three blow up the bomb. Four and five blow up the bomb. Just confirm that five, seven, eight, nine will not do it, right? Seven. This is cool. I get it. Oh, I see. And it can enforce a, a code sequence by having certain orders cancel out the solution, right? It's cute. It's a neat way to like explain to you this is what's actually going on when there's a keypad. Pay attention to the order of things. All right, we've seen one of these. I don't know if there's a name for this pattern here where you have four switches surrounded by XOR gates so that it matters if uh, adjacent switches are enabled. I think I do this one to turn the capacitor on, but I don't want the capacitor on because the capacitor on leads to my death. Okay, let's, uh, let's not do that. Either of these will activate the capacitor, which is why they're saying beware the order of things. Okay. It's already game over once I hit either of those two on the left. Cutting this wire makes the puzzle unsolvable, I think. I don't want to fuck with that. Turns that one on. Got it. Okay, yeah. Don't fuck with these switches, basically. Here's your next board. It's my only action. Okay, now there's a button I can press, and then there's wires I can cut. You're dead. We're all dead. Why did that happen? Oh, I didn't. I didn't see this wire here connecting. But I can press it on the appropriate timing and not get destroyed in between the ticks. That was fun. 
This will be really hard, I promise. This is our penultimate bomb. Flicking this is death no matter what, I think. No, as long as this isn't on, that's where the problem is. So we need power to go through here. Which means I cut that guy. And that, no, <laughs> let me see what I did wrong. Oh, because then this is on. I'd have to be holding the switch down, which is impossible. Or there not being any power to the box, but it's also impossible for me to deny power to the box. So this this wire would have to be cut as well. Whoops, that was poor. I think I can safely cut power to this one now. Yeah. And then I think it's this one. There we go. And this button is no longer relevant. This is traveling here now. I need to get power through to here. How do I do that? One of these needs to be cut. Oh, but now I've got a problem with this one. There's too much power now and I can't... I can't fix it anymore. Got it. I can definitely cut that guy. This guy. And this guy. Wait, I think I just did that in the wrong order. Whoops. That's what we want. There, and that one's flowing to that one. I have to be very careful about the order in which I do things here. Um, right now, I can't have power going to this XOR gate, but I need power going to this part of the AND gate. So where do I do that from? Oh, I think, I, I think I'm not allowed to cut this wire. I think that makes the puzzle unsolved, but let me think about it. No, that just goes to the off switch. That's not necessarily true. If I cut this one, this is still getting power. This will turn on. Uh, but now I've got the same XOR problem. And I have no way to stop this top one from getting power, right? Oh, no, I guess I can. Disregard. I think it was actually solvable last time when I gave up. I misunderstood the power flow earlier. Did I have a... Was this battery getting everything on this side? No, it was all coming from this battery. Okay. This is your final test. Good luck. Jesus Christ. We can zoom out the battery, you know. I can chop everything up, it looks like. So pressing this button passes through these gates. This is the... There are three ways I can die. The timer running out. Um, it's this one. This one here. Getting this AND gate enabled will kill me. So I think that's... Let's try hitting all these switches and just see what happens. It's probably death. I guess not. So this is mainly about turning on the... flip-flop boxes, right? This also can turn all of them off when I press this button, okay? So, let's see. Which ones do I actually want? I want... I think, I think this one is one where I have to make it so that when the clock runs out, the bomb won't detonate. Uh, 
Well, no, that's not possible. The bomb's going to detonate when the clock runs out, no matter what, right? And I can't turn off power. I guess the positioning of the battery. Hmm. Oh, but I can depower this thing. Okay, so I need... I need all of these AND gates to be turned on, which I think involves turning on all of these slip-flop boxes. Okay. So I do that one. Turns on one box. I don't turn it back off when I switch it. I think that's it. Yeah, because I think that the detonation... Let's see. Holding it down doesn't do anything for what it's worth. I would have hit the intermission button, but I should have done it sooner. Hooray! You defused the most complicated board of the game. Congratulations. Cool. Bomb Squad Academy. That was a good game. Thanks for sharing this retro. That was fun. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I think that uh, it's like the most degenerate possible puzzle game and that most puzzles and most video games you can express as a Bomb Squad Academy puzzle. So I'd encourage people to play this game if you're like a dungeon master, if you design your own puzzles for players, you could probably steal any one of the bombs in this game and just skin it with anything, right? Statues, elemental spells, bushes that you have to cut down, <laughs> all kinds of things. All right, we're going to play... Uh, Retro's other sub-block game today, which is Megabot. It's going to give me a few minutes to get that set up because it's a little janky. Bear with me here. 